welcome to another edition of ACWA Danger Zone TV. I'm your host, Steve Miller. Tonight you will see the ACWA Tough Man Tournament, which will include four ACWA stars competing for their shot at the ACWA Heavyweight Championship. Let's get right to the action to see who will face the Ripper number two in our main event later tonight. In first round action, you will see the Orphan taking on Warpath and Pennywise, the Court Jester, the Hired Gun, of the Darkness will take on two-time former ACWA Heavyweight Champion, the American rock star, CJ Summers. You could bet CJ is focused not only on getting the ACWA Heavyweight title back, but getting his hands on the Ripper number two. Let's go to the action. The Orphan was bragging on the last episode of ACW Danger Zone TV on how he retained the unsanctioned title of the Orphan Cup. As now we are set for first round action in the ACWA Tough Man Tournament. As you see in the ring at this time, newcomer Warpath is taking on the Orphan. The winner of this match will face the winner of the second first round match in which American rock star CJ Summers will be facing off against Pennywise. This should be an exciting contest as, as you see now the Orphan is once again... Now, now we got to sit here listen to, to the orphan talk and babble again. He's, he's just you, doing what he always does, and that's stalling before every match he's ever in. He'll find any way to get into the head of his opponent. As now the bell sounds, and we are underway in this first round match of the ACWA Tough Man Tournament. Now the Warpath has to be wary of the tactics of the orphan. As you know the history of the orphan in ACWA, he'll use any means necessary, any cheating, eye-poking, choking, whatever the case may be, to gain victory in his match. Warpath starting starting off fast with right hands to the face. The Orphan reversing the Irish hit, ducks a clothesline. High cross body onto the Orphan, getting the only two count. He didn't hook the leg. Warpath's got to keep this momentum going so he can gain victory in this match and try to move on to the finals of this ACWA Tough Man Tournament. The Orphan once again taking a timeout, but there's no timeout in wrestling. He's just buying his time, trying to figure out another way to cheat his way to a victory. So once again, he's paying more attention to the crowd and what the crowd's saying about him than paying attention to his opponent in the ring. The referee has got to get him back in the match. He's stalling too much. The referee's got to issue a count and somehow order him to get back in the match. He's given opportune time for Warpath to, to think of strategies to figure out his way to come out victorious in this match. This referee is not doing a good job of getting this match going. The orphan is stalling way too much, and that, now, unfortunately, the, the referee was just had uh, Orphan's body odor unleashed on his face as Orphan slammed his armpit into the referee's face. That's, let's just get to the action here, but once again, the Orphan finally back into center of the ring, ready to get this match underway yet again. As both men lock up into center of the ring, Orphan taking early control, tightening up on the armbar. As you can see, he's tightening it out, but now Warpath reverses it, taking the advantage over the Orphan. With another arm ringer really wrenching down on that shoulder. Orphan's looking for a way to reverse it. He reverses into a hammer lock. And now has control over Warpath. Warpath reverses into the hammer lock, into the side head lock on the Orphan, wrenching down on the head, twisting it around, turning it into a hammer lock, showing the great technical skill in the ring. With a single leg trip, taking the Orphan down to the mat. Now it looks like he's got him in got him in almost a, a version of a of a choke here. Almost looks like it, the referee's got to watch it as his arm slid a little bit under the chin there. As now Warpath taking control with the stomps to the back of the neck. Orphan, Orphan now being fired off the ropes, center ropes. Warpath with a drop kick to the face, knocking the Orphan down to the mat. He's got to stay on top of his opponent. The refer oh, come on, referee, that was a low blow. You could clearly see that. Should the Orphan should be disqualified right now. The referee warning him, but he shouldn't even be warned. He should be disqualified. That's an illegal move, but the referee is just letting this match go on. Orphan now with a headbutt on Warpath. Warpath is in a bad situation right now. With that low blow, definitely slowed down the momentum of this match. Orphan firing Warpath off the ropes into a clothesline, twisting him in the air, knocking him down to the mat. Orphan now just taunting his opponent instead of going for the win. Just standing over his opponent and just dropping down onto Warpath, getting a two count. Once again, did not hook the leg, but he is firmly in control of this matchup. He's got to use his, because he does have a bit of a size advantage. Just now lifting Warpath in the air and slamming him hard down to the center of the ring. 
again, talking to the fans and d mocking a legend of the sport here. But once again, the orphan now taking his time, buying his time, not taking advantage of his opponent who's lying motionless in the middle of the ring. This is giving time for Warpath to recover here. Orphan dropping the leg across Warpath's chest. This could be it. Referee gets only a two count as Warpath gets that left shoulder off the mat. Orphan was a little bit lackadaisical in that cover there, not going for the leg and not just not hooking it. It's basic wrestling. He should know that. But again, he is the orphan. And again, he'll do anything to cheat his way to a victory as now he's got a front face lock on the orphan, cinching down on the neck, prevent, preventing Warpath from getting a breath of air and recovering from his previous beating in this match. His orphan is, is firmly in control of this match. And now the referee's ba backing him off because he s did see the arm slipped under the chin in a bit of a chokehold. As now the Orphan firing off with the right hand, setting up the Warpath for an elbow to the top of the head, knocking Warpath down to the mat. This could be it, but Orphan is taking his time. As now he's raking the eyes with the boot. The referee has got to warn. I mean, how many times is he going to let the Orphan go in this match? That's two times he should have been disqualified in this match, but the referee is letting the match continue, showing a little bit of leeway on his part. Orphan firing off Warpath, going for the knee. Warpath hooks him up, only gets a two count. Warpath seems to be regaining momentum, but he he just seems out of it now as Orphan once again knocks him down to the mat with a reverse elbow. And now he's talking he's talking to the ref, asking who his opponent is. He's got to stay on Warpath. The referee's only doing his job, although the referee sh could have disqualified Orphan twice in this match earlier. As once again, Orphan with the arrogant cover, only putting one hand on Warpath, trying to gain victory. As now or Orphan is setting up, slamming Warpath's head into the turnbuckle. Now firing off Irish Whip into the far corner. Orphan looks like he set him up for this avalanche, and he crushes Warpath in the corner. This Warpath is just, the only way he's standing is by his arms being hooked over the top rope. Otherwise, he would have fell to the ground. Another Irish Whip into the far corner. This could be, what he's signaling one more. That's it. He misses the avalanche. Warpath gets out of the way. Warpath, he's setting, him, he's setting up Orphan for something. Hurricane run on, on Orphan, knocking Orphan down to the mat. Warpath has regained the momentum in this match. He's got to keep it going if he wants to be victorious and move on to the finals. And Warpath showing tremendous strength with a front slam on, War, on Orphan, taking him down to the mat. And now Warpath going off the middle rope with a moonsault, but he misses it. Orphan rolling out of the way at the last second. Now Warpath grabbing in his midsection. He is not, he's in a dangerous place right now. The Orphan has got to take advantage of this mistake. What is he doing? He's pulling the he's pulling the shirt over the referee's face. The referee can't see what's going on. Wait a minute, he's got the trophy in hand. Hits Warpath on the top of the head, knocking Warpath out. And of course he gets rid of the trophy. The referee still got the shirt over his head. The referee finally pulls the shirt out. Counts three. And Orphan has cheated his way to another victory. And now he will advance to the finals to face the winner of the match between Pennywise and the American rock star, CJ Summers. You've seen the pictures. You've heard the stories. Killer tsunamis in 12 countries. Thousands of children and their families dead. Millions left homeless. But UNICEF is there. The lead children's organization in the world, UNICEF provides life-saving medicine, nutrition, clean water, shelter, and blankets in emergencies. Right now, millions of survivors need our help. Call 1-800-4-UNICEF or visit unicefusa.org. Side area set for his match in the first round of the ACWA Tough Man Tournament, taking on the hired gun of the darkness in Pennywise. But as you see, Delamorte is lurking outside of the ring, and that could only mean trouble for the American rock star. As you know the history with CJ Summers and the darkness, the darkness has done everything in their power to try and end CJ Summers' career. They got the ACWA championship belt from him, but you know their real purpose is to end Summers' career. But he's got to be wary of her on the outside as she can only mean trouble in this match trying to give the advantage to her new hired gun in Pennywise. Not much is known about Pennywise. He's a bit of a mysterious character other than the fact he looked, he's got pretty good size and he seems to possess some type of power advantage here. CJ Summers is going to have to use his quickness and agility to gain victory in this match. Taking down Pennywise early with an arm drag and a single leg trip. And he takes down Pennywise again with another arm drag. Now he's wrenching down. Notice the placement of the knee right under the arm as he wrenches down and pulls back on the shoulder. But Pennywise is, Pennywise is not going to give up. But as you see, Della Morte barking orders to her newest minion, her newest monster in the darkness in Pennywise. 
And Pennywise is back up on a vertical base, raking the eyes. The referee has got to warn him about that. That should be a disqualification. I mean, these are illegal moves, but once again, this referee is letting the action go. I guess he wants to see a winner. He wants to. See, he'll let. He'll let just about anything go. It's now C.J. Summers firing off the ropes, ducks the back elbow, duck under the clothesline, pushing off. He rolls back off the ropes. Pennywise holding the rope so he doesn't get rolled over, and again taking Pennywise down to the mat with another arm drag back to the armbar, and again Pennywise is back down on the mat. C.J. Summers taking the advantage, using his quickness, his agility, and his technical know-how to take advantage in this match. But again, Pennywise is back up to a vertical base. C.J. Summers taking him down with a hip toss, dropping the leg onto the elbow. As you can see, his focus at this point seems to be working over that left shoulder and elbow of Pennywise. And that's a good move on his part, as with a man with his kind of size and seems his kind of strength, you need to work on some sort of body part to take away those power maneuvers of Pennywise. But Pennywise rolling over. He's got C.J. Summers pinned, only gets a two count. C.J. kicks out. And now Della Morte again complaining to the referee, saying that that was too slow of a count. But she's not in the ring. She could clearly see it was there was nothing wrong with that count. The referee was fine. As now both men lock up in the ring. Once again, Pennywise going to the eyes, now driving the elbow into the back of the neck of C.J. Summers, knocking him down to the mat. He's now setting C.J. up, dropping him down to a powerful neck breaker in the middle of the ring. Going for the cover, only getting two count as CJ gets the right shoulder off the mat. Now he, I, you know what? We can't even tell when Pennywise complains to the referee if he even talks. Not as I said earlier, not much is known about this mysterious monster. We'll even call him. He's a monster because anybody that's associated with with the darkness has got to be a monster, a beast, or of some kind. Del Morte now looks looks a little. She looks a lot happier. She definitely got a smile on her face as her man is now taking firm control of this match. Now he's grabbing CJ by the hair. The referee's got to break that. There's no you got to break the got to break the hold, referee. Now the referee finally gets Pennywise to break the hold. CJ Summers firing off rights and lefts to the midsection, but to no avail. As just with a clubbing forearm, Pennywise knocks him down to the mat. As you hear now, the the fans are getting behind CJ. He's got to use this to his advantage to regain the momentum in this match. Pennywise setting up CJ. Snapping him over with a suplex in the middle ring. As you now see, Summers is grabbing that lower back. Pennywise is using all of his strength and size to gain victory. As now he goes for the cover. Lateral press, only getting a two count as CJ Summers kicks out. Now Del Morte again complaining and protesting to the referee for a slow count. Pennywise has got to stay on his man as he now knocking CJ Summers down again with a forearm to the back of the neck. Just clubbing away, clubbing balls one after another. Now he's taking CJ and he throws him to the outside of the ring. That can only mean trouble as now Pennywise is distracting the referee. And there you go. Look at Del Morte on the outside of the ring. Just laying the boots down to CJ Summers. Rights and lefts. Just kicking Summers while he's down on the outside of the ring. And the referee doesn't see any of this. Pennywise is conveniently distracting the referee as Del Morte just rolls Summers back in the ring. And now he's just lying motionless there. As Pennywise now is commanding the referee to go count him with an arrogant cover, only putting two hands on Summers. And Summers once again kicks out by getting that right shoulder off the mat. Del Morte again just continuously protesting the referee. Now Pennywise is setting him up here. Just holding by here, almost taunting Summers. Hoists him up in the air. He's got him on the shoulder. And he looks, he's setting him up and drives him down with a powerful slam in the middle of the ring. Now just once again with another arrogant cover, just laying on top of CJ, posing as if he's the strongest man in this ring, and just showing that you know he doesn't care what kind of pain he inflicts on Summers, as long as he gets victory. But he's failing to hook the leg each and every time. As now he's he's choking out the choking out Summers. The referee's got to stop this. The referee's got to issue his five count. He's warning Pennywise now, but the referee is not breaking this hold. Pennywise seems to be getting a little frustrated here, he's firing up in the middle of the ring, but. Now he's, he's even jawing with the fans. He's got to stay on his opponent because we know with the heart and determination of C.J. Summers, he'll fight back in his match. He'll find a way to fight back. But the odds could be against him in this match. His chances, chances are not so good with Della Morte on the outside of the ring. You know that's only going to mean trouble as Pennywise slamming Summers down in the middle of the ring once again. Seems taking his time, going for the cover once again, but only putting two hands on Summers. Summers gets that left shoulder off the mat, and the match continues as he only gets a two and a half count. But it seems to be getting closer and closer every time Pennywise administers another form of pain. Now he's pulling, he's got Summers by the head, twisting his head, trying to make CJ quit in the middle of the ring. He's got CJ down, just wrenching down on the head. That's got to be painful. You could see the pressure he's putting on the neck. 
and on the upper body of Summers with this hold, but CJ's not giving up. The, listen, the fans are getting behind him, trying to get CJ back up from this. Delamorte protesting the ref. They said CJ's giving up here. He hasn't given up. The referee's right there. CJ has not given up as Pennywise finally releases the hold. But again, he's taking his time with his, with his advantage that he clearly has in this match. He's been beating on CJ throughout this match with powerful slams and that clubbing forearm to the back of the neck as now he's firing off to the midsection. Fires Summers off the ropes. Summers ducks the clothesline. Comes off the ropes. Rappy girl. Wait, what a submission hold. He's got a scissor, a head scissor on Pennywise and wrenching back on the arm, trying to get Pennywise to quit. What a move by Summers. But Pennywise breaks out. Pennywise just knocking CJ down with a clothesline. You see Summers' head bouncing off the mat, holding the back of that neck. With all that pressure from that submission hold earlier, that's got to be a focal point of Pennywise. Got to work over that head and neck and the upper body of Summers. Is now once again taking his time, just posturing in the ring, just dropping the leg across the chest, going for the cover. Gets a two count as CJ kicks out once again. But these arrogant covers are just not going to get Pennywise to victory here. And now you could see Della Mortes barking out further orders for her minion to inflict pain on CJ Summers. Now Pennywise looks like he, he's signaling that's it. Setting CJ up in the middle of the ring. Hoist him up in the air. He's got him on the shoulder. CJ reverses it. Looks like reversing it into a, into a backslide. He hooks him up. He's got the shoulders down. Only gets a two count as Pennywise kicks out. And now Del Morte is on the ringside area. And of course, you know, CJ didn't hit her, but wait a minute. CJ ducks out of the way, and Pennywise almost hits Del Morte. CJ drop kicks Pennywise into Del Morte. CJ hooking the leg. He gets the three count, and CJ Summers will move on to the finals of the ACWA Tough Man Tournament, where he will face the Orphan. And the winner of that match will go on to meet the Ripper number two in our main event later tonight. What's this? CJ Summer removing the mask of Pennywise. Wait a minute. That's that's the Ripper number two. What what is that? What what kind of what kind of move is this from the darkness? I don't get it. Can you believe this? Another deception by Della Morte in the darkness. CJ defeated Pennywise, ultimately to find out it was the Ripper number two. You have to wonder, was this all part of Della Morte's master plan to protect the Ripper number two from losing the title? and preventing CJ from getting another shot. But as the former champion has proven time and time again, he will overcome any obstacle in his way. And as you've seen, the Orphan has cheated his way yet to another victory to advance to the finals. And now he will face CJ to see who will take on the Ripper number two later tonight in our main event. But before we go to that final match of the ACWA Tough Man Tournament, let's go to some pre-recorded comments from ACWA Women's Champion, Della Morte. You have to wonder now, will the Darkness get involved in this match to try and prevent CJ from getting his shot at the title? Or are they planning to try and end his career?
Now we're set for the finals of the ACWA Tough Man Tournament. And in this match, the winner of this contest will go on to face the Ripper number two. As you just heard, though, Del Morte was complaining about how Billy Lassiter was suspended. But it wasn't CJ Summers' fault that he was suspended. It was the ACWA Championship Committee that decided, due to the constant interference that the darkness has had throughout the ACW and getting involved in everybody's matches, that they only saw fit to suspend Billy Lassiter indefinitely to show they don't they don't condone any of that cheating by the darkness here in ACWA. It's now we are set as referee checking both men getting the Orphan Cup out of the ring and getting it away from ringside area. As you know earlier, the Orphan used the Orphan Cup to get the victory over Warpath to advance to this final match in the Tough Man Tournament to face former champion CJ Summers. Now the Orphan once again stalling, watering himself down and throwing the water bottle at CJ Summers. The referee warning him for using any foreign objects in the match. There we go, the bell is sounded and we're underway in the finals of the ACWA Tough Man Tournament. CJ ready to lock him in the middle of the ring and Orphan stopping saying he wasn't ready yet. There's no time, I mean, you know, the referee's gotta do something here. It seems every, every time we see the Orphan here, he takes his time, he just slows down and stops. The referee has got to do something, issue some kind of count, force force the orphan to start this match. The, the, I mean, the orphan's just sitting, he's sitting there in the corner relaxing, like he's just sitting on the back porch or something. This, I mean, this guy takes so much time. The referee's got to force him to get in the middle ring and lock up. I mean, he's got to realize that he also has the opportunity to go on to the main event to face the Ripper number two for the ACWA Heavyweight Championship. Now Orphan taking the early advantage, wrenching down on the arm ringer, sending CJ down to one knee. CJ fights his way back up to a vertical base. Nice kip up. Re regains the advantage. Any reversal. Wrenching down on the arm bar, sending the Orphan down to both knees as he's just wrenching right into a, a almost looks like a half Nelson there. Get, getting only a one count, though. Orphan rolls out of the ring once again, stalling. Referee's got to issue his count. He's got to issue the 10 count, forcing the orphan to get back in the ring. As referee signaling CJ to go back to the other side of the ring. As the referee is now beginning his count. And now Orphan's sitting down in the front row, watching the referee count him out. Referee's up, and you can see the fans are getting on the case of the orphan here. Now the orphan going in, breaking the referee's count, and once again sitting down. As now the referee has got to issue the issue count. And there we go again, issuing another 10 count. The orphan once again, he gets up, looks like he's ready to finally get back into the ring, climbing up the steps and finally getting back into the ring after taking a, a brief intermission of his own. And now it seems like he's ready to fight, finally. As both men once again locking up in the middle ring, orphan wrenching down on the arm bar, getting CJ down to one, to one knee, now kicking CJ in the back, taking early advantage, using his size, driving the elbow into the shoulder, seems to be his early focus at this point working on the left arm and shoulder of C.J. Summers, firing Summers into the turnbuckle, following up with a clothesline and a head bunt, just pounding away at Summers in the corner, taking the early advantage using his size and strength. That's now Irish whip and a beal into the other corner, just tossing C.J. around like he's a toy. But Orphan's got to stay on Summers here. As a Summers with kicks, kicks to the midsection and a right hand, firing his way out of the corner, using momentum, firing out of the corner, Orphan, Reverses it into a powerful power slam in the middle of the ring, but he's not taking advantage. And finally goes for the cover, doesn't hook the leg, and CJ kicks out, getting that left shoulder off the mat. Now o Orphan is just taunting CJ in the middle of the ring. He's just setting him up, hoists him up in the air, and drives him down into an or Almost looks like, I'll call that the Orphan driver. Almost like a body slam pile driver move. But once again, not hooking the leg. Again, firing off CJ into the ropes, knocking him down with a powerful back elbow. Once again, the head smacking off the back of the mat. CJ once again holding that back of the, holding the back of his neck. He's got to be in a lot of pain right now. He's, he, he can't seem to regain his vertical base, and the orphan is firmly in control. He's got to take advantage here. So, come on, referee. Stepping on, he's stepping on his hair, pulling back on him. you got to break that. Have referee issuing his five count, but orphan does break it before the count of five. Otherwise, he would have been disqualified. Once again, now firing off on Summers. Summers regains the advantage, drop kicking Orphan into the corner, knocking him down to the mat. CJ's running into the corner, drop kicking Orphan into the face, knocking Orphan down to the mat, and 
Well, the, the referee's got to warn CJ about that. That was a little bit of a uh, low drop kick. That I, I believe that hit him in the upper thigh. As now yanking Orphan out of the corner, hooking the leg, only getting a two count as the Orphan kicks out. CJ is now regaining the advantage, dropping the elbow, driving it down into the chest of the Orphan. He's got to keep this match fast paced. That Use that to his advantage because the Orphan, you know, would love to slow this match down because that's more his style, more his style of slowing it down and just beating on his opponent, whereas CJ's got to keep it up with that speed and agility if he wants to keep the advantage and the momentum in this match. As now CJ hoist, got him wrenching down into a side headlock, but the Orphan reverses it in the belly to back suplex, driving Summers down into the mat, but both men are down on the mat now, and the referee's going to begin his 10 count. But the Orphan slowly gets up, goes over to cover Summers, hooks the leg. CJ kicks out after the count of two, getting that right shoulder off the mat. Orphan's a little slow in recovering, but now he's choking out. Come on, referee, you got to break the hold. That's, that's, a, that's a clear choke. The referee's right there. He finally starts his count, signals count of four, but the Orphan breaks it before the count of five. The referee's got to watch him. Orphan once again going to the choke. I mean, this referee has got to do something about this. That, that's twice. And then the orphan, orphan backs off as if he did nothing, as if he's innocent. Orphan now just taunting, taunting, drawing with the crowd and taunting Summers. Now Summers is just, he seems to be almost lying motionless now. As again, he's firing off Summers into the ropes. CJ ducks the clothesline, comes off the ropes with a flying clothesline of his own, knocking the Orphan down to the mat. Once again, both men are down, but CJ crawls over for the cover, only getting a two count as Orphan gets that right shoulder off the mat. CJ seems to be running on all cylinders out. Now he's driving Orphan's head down into the mat with a powerful DDT. That could be it. Now he's climbed out to the ring apron. And he nails the Orphan in the middle of the ring. Goes for a cover. Only gets a two count. Orphan, once again, he does kick out. Orphan is showing a lot of resilience in this match as well. Seems to be wearing down, though, with you know carrying all that weight around. But come on, referee. Again, another low blow. You clearly can see that. And the referee doesn't disqualify him. That was clearly a low blow. The referee saw it, but he didn't disqualify the Orphan. He's letting the match continue. I, I don't know how much the Orphan's going to get away with. But, you know, of course, that's to his liking. He loves to do everything he can in the ring. He doesn't care if he cheats. Now just throwing CJ Summers out to the outside of the ring. But now he's, say, he's saying, oh, I didn't do anything. But now Orphan following CJ out to the outside of the ring. Grabbing him by the head and slamming his face into the steps on the outside of the ring. The referee's warning Orphan to get him back into the ring. Tell him he's got to get back in the ring. Slams now CJ's face into the ring post. The referee is still issuing his 10 count, trying to get both men into the ring. Trying to fire CJ into the ring post. CJ reverses it, sending Orphan crashing into the ring post on the outside of the ring. CJ rolling back into the ring. As the referee's continuing his count, the referee breaks his count. As now the Orphan is still lying, lying motionless, knocked silly after hitting that ring post. As now CJ is following him to the outside of the ring. The referee once again issuing his count. CJ Summers going crashing down with a double axe handle on the outside of the ring. Now the referee is going to the outside trying to get these competitors back into the ring to continue this match. Referee's now, he's warning both men he's got to issue his 10 count because both men are on the outside of the ring. Now CJ just ramming the Orphan's head into the mat. Grabbing with the head, once again ramming his head into the mat. See, he's getting a lot of anger in there, but Orphan once again with a with a close low blow. The referee's got to watch that. As once again, he goes low on Summers to gain the advantage. Wait a minute. Now, Orphan's leaving the ringside area. What's he doing? He's giving ample time for CJ to recover in the middle of the ring as the referee once again begins his 10 count. Wait wait a minute. Come on, referee. That's He can't bring that into the ring. That's illegal. You see, now Orphan's got the Orphan Cup. He's bringing that into the ring, and the, the referee's not doing anything. I mean, he hasn't hit him with it, so he's not disqualified, but he knows if he does. And the referee stops him, grabbing the Orphan Cup from the Orphan's hand, telling him if he uses that, he's going to get disqualified. Referee putting the Orphan Cup on the outside of the ring, getting that odd foreign object out of the ring. CJ being knocked down once again with a powerful clothesline from the Orphan. As now Orphan is backing the referee up, telling him not to get in his way, to stop meddling in his business in the middle of the ring. Because you know the Orphan will, will use anything it takes. He doesn't care. Foreign object choking. Now he sends CJ crashing into the referee. The referee's been sent down to the canvas. The referee is out. Now what's, look at the Orphan just taunting the crowd and saying, look what happened to the referee. And there we go again. He's got the Orphan cup in his hand. Come on. Somebody's got to stop this. Orphan's ready to, setting up to hit CJ, knocking him in the head, sending CJ down to the mat. That's got to be it for Summers. The match has got to be over. He's lying motionless in the middle of the ring. Orphan goes over, hooks the leg. But the referee is out as the referee's finally coming to, just slowly crawling over. 
with a two count. And the Orphan has defeated CJ Summers with the use of the Orphan Cup. The referee didn't see any of that. As you saw, the referee was knocked out from CJ Summers being sent into him from the Orphan. Orphan gains victory. The referee didn't see any of that. Once again, the Orphan cheats his way to another victory. And now there's Warpath on the outside of the ring. And now Warpath's coming out to the ring trying to convince, telling the referee that he used the Orphan Cup to gain victory over CJ Summers. And or, now the referee didn't see anything as you ho see him holding his midsection, but now the referee's asking the fans around the ring if the Orphan used the cup. You see War Warpath on the outside of the ring. He knows what it's like. He got hit in the head with it earlier. And that's how Orphan advanced to this match. Now wait, the referee's now signaling, signaling to the bell to continue the match. CJ with the cover. Hooking the Orphan, pins his shoulders down, and C.J. Summers has now won this contest. He is the winner of the ACWA Tough Man Tournament and now will go on to face the Ripper number two in our main event later tonight. You've seen the pictures. You've heard the stories. Killer tsunamis in 12 countries. Thousands of children and their families dead. Millions left homeless. But UNICEF is there. The lead children's organization in the world, UNICEF provides life-saving medicine, nutrition, clean water, shelter, and blankets in emergencies. Right now, millions of survivors need our help. Call 1-800-4-UNICEF or visit unicefusa.org. And this match has started abruptly as now Ripper number two taking early advantage on CJ. And you know he's only got one thing on his mind with his leader, his master, Delamorte, on the outside of the ring. They've only got one thing on their mind, and that's finally trying to end the career of CJ Summers. As Ripper number two comes crashing into the corner with a powerful avalanche, you can see CJ grabbing at his midsection. Could have an injury there once again, but the Ripper number two with the arrogant cover only using two hands, not even body on body. He's, he's got to know to use his, his tremendous size and his strength to gain victory over CJ. As now Ripper number two hoisting CJ in the air, setting him up for what looks to be a powerful slam right in the middle of the ring, center ring as you see CJ grabbing his lower back and Ripper just almost seems like he's just nodding his head like this is fun for him. Like it just, you know, this is this is a game to him. Della Morte, you can tell, you know she's happy about this. It's, come on referee, he's stepping on throat. That's a choke. The referee's got to break the hold. That's, that's an illegal move. Now Ripper number two going for the cup. No, he's not going for the Choking him again. Come on, referee. That's twice. The referee issuing a count. Only gets the four. Ripper number two breaks it before the count of five. Ripper number two just, you know, this is the kind of pace he wants. He wants it slow, methodical, and painful. And with the disadvantage of having De La Morte at ringside, CJ's already got a large mountain to climb in this match. Now, but Ripper number two is once again taking his time. Again, going to the choke. The referee's got to break this. Come on, referee. That's that's the third time he's choked out CJ in this match. The referee hasn't done anything but issue a count. He should have been disqualified. But as you fans know, the disqualification does not give you the championship. Disqualification will give you the match, but you will not win the title. The referee seems to be given a lot of leeway here. Look at this. Del Morte on the outside of the ring, driving the elbows into the back of CJ Summers as Ripper number two distracts the referee. The referee's not seen any of this. Now Del Morte choking out CJ on the outside of the ring. The referee hasn't seen any of this. Now CJ is rolling back into the ring, lying motionless in the corner. Ripper number two still arguing with the referee, finally turning around to see his opponent just laying prone on the canvas in the corner. And now Ripper number two just dragging CJ to the ring as he looks like he's set him up. This this could be it here. He's now he's grabbing both legs. Looks like he's setting him up for the slip. What a slingshot under the bottom rope, just snapping CJ's head off the bottom rope. That could be it. It's now the referee checking on CJ to see if he's okay. Summers looks like he will continue here. But Della Morte just looking for her opportunity. She just She's just lurking around the ringside area, looking for a spot to come in there and inflict more damage and pain on CJ. Now Ripper number two, again, just dragging CJ around the ring like a rag doll. 
Now you just hoist him up in the air, hooks him up, belly belly suplex, driving CJ into the middle of the mat. That could be it. He's once again nodding his head like this is nothing to him. Ripper number two going for the cover, only gets a two count as CJ barely gets that right shoulder off the mat. Della Morte once again protesting the referee. She's complaining the referee's too slow in the count. And with the size of Ripper number two, the referee's got to be a little bit intimidated himself. And Ripper number two just driving the elbow into the chest of CJ Summers. Now driving the elbow into the upper back of CJ Summers, complaining to the referee, he, that should be a, this should be a three count. But again, he's taking his time as he goes to drive another elbow. CJ rolls out of the way. Ripper number two misses the elbow to the back. Now holding his elbow. This could be CJ's opportunity to regain the momentum here. As he fires off a right hand to the midsection. And another one to the head. Just firing off with rights and lefts. But the Ripper puts a stop to that with a clubbing blow to the back of the neck. Knocking CJ down to the mat. Now Ripper number two setting up CJ. Looks like he's ho hooks him up. What looks like could be... A a side slam right in the middle of the ring, driving Summers into the mat. Could have knocked the wind out of him, but Ripper number two once again is taking his time here. Just seems like he's almost like toying with CJ here. Now he pulls him to the far corner, setting him up here. I don't know what kind of move this is going to... Wait a minute, folks. He's setting up CJ here, just making, making sure he's in the right places. Now the, the Ripper number two looks like he's ascending the ropes. I've never seen this before. Going for the drop, and he misses it. Holding his midsection as CJ rolls out of the way. He's got to regain the momentum here. CJ Summers with the clothesline, knocking Ripper number two down. But Ripper number two gets up again. CJ's now drop kick to the left knee. That's got that's good strategy on CJ's part, trying to take the wheels off of Ripper number two. And with a leg Larry knocking Ripper number two down to the mat. CJ seems now he's firing up, regaining the momentum in this matchup, firing off at right hands, ascending the middle turnbuckle. Now firing off the right hands, he's here. The fans are count behind him, but the referee is also issuing his count, trying to break that move out of the corner. Ripper number two seems to be lying in wait here as CJ fires him off, trying to fire him off into the Irish whip. Ripper number two reverses it into a power slam in the middle of the ring, hooks the near leg, only getting a two count as CJ just gets that shoulder off the mat. But it seems every time Ripper number two goes for the cover, that count is getting closer and closer to three as he seems to just inflict more pain, more damage. This could be just wearing out C.J. Summers here. Ripper number two just takes his time. What is, what is this? Del Morte's running from the ringside area. As now Ripper number two snapping him over with a snapmare. Wait a minute. Now Del Morte's, now she's got her championship belt and his championship belt. What is going on here? Ripper number two's got both belts in the ring, and he's laying them on the, on the face of C.J. Summers here. He's propping up the women's title and his heavyweight title onto the face of CJ Summers here. Del Morte's in the ring. The referee's got to get them both out of here. Oh, my God. Come on. Now, that's a drop kick to the side of the head. That's got to be it. The referee's got to disqualify. And he's finally ringing, ringing the bell. What, what is this? I mean, could this, be, could this be what they've tried to do all along? Trying to end CJ Summers' career by driving both belts into the face of CJ Summers? CJ Summers may have won this match by disqualification. But more importantly, the Ripper number two has kept the title. I, I just don't understand this. But like I said earlier, the darkness just does not care about this anymore. They don't care about, you know, the, the title. They have the title. Now they just want to end his career. They just don't care what kind of damage they inflict on CJ as he's lying motionless in the ring. And now they finally exit the ringside area. Referee going in to check on CJ Summers. And that's it for tonight's show, folks. Don't forget to tune in next week when we have more great wrestling action. Don't forget to check us out on the web at www.acwrestling.com. If you have any questions or suggestions, write us at acwa-nj at juno.com. Once again, thanks for tuning in. Good night, everyone.